Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. Today we're going to be running some L4 missions in a Marshall. A 6 billion isk hull with a, like almost 1 billion worth of fittings on it. It's a total loot pinata. 7 bill. So we've got 7 bill sitting right here. And we're going to do some classic L4 missions in it. It's not because uh, the Marshall is particularly good at L4 missions. It's just because... Uh, just for fun, just for fun, guys, just for, just for fun. It's because I think this ship looks really good. I don't know what it is with Black Ops battleships, but they just make them look so good. CCP makes them look so good, and it's just unfortunate that they're not more effective than they are. But with torpedoes, this is what I'm going right here. See this fit right here? This is a pretty, like, you know, simple fit. You know, torpedoes, shield booster, uh, and then I got weapon fire here because the Marshal gets some bonuses to weapon fire range. So our Fed Navy stats and rapid fire gets a pretty good range. It could be even more. I've only got Black Ops at level 3. I didn't, it was not so long ago I got it trained and I didn't train a whole lot of levels either. Because I'm not a big Black Ops dropper. I've never really used them apart from PvE in PvE activities. <laughs> I just trained it because I think the Black Ops battleships look really cool. So either way, uh, the thing is, I chose torpedoes. You can use every single type of weapon system on the Marshall. That's the thing that's pretty interesting about the Incom ships. You can use every type of weapon system. So you see here, you got light harbor turret damage, large projectile turret, heavy cruise torpedo launchers, large energy turrets. Every single weapon system can be used in it being optimal. I could have had these two high slots here and I could have put some turret slots because you see it's got some turret slots available right here. Uh, they had a bit of a problem though with the fitting requirements. Uh, one thing that's exceptionally good about the Marshall is that it has a very good tank. So I mentioned that it's not particularly like effective for the specific case of L4 missions because in L4 missions you really want to have as much DPS as possible. Tank is very rarely an issue. It's usually always the case of just having too much tank and not enough DPS and mobility. You need mobility and DPS really to have a good L4 mission ship. So if we go here and simulate fit, you can see we've got a very, very big active defense going on right here. 500 HP per second. And it's just because they have a bonus to the way Armor repair and shield booster effectiveness is increased by a percentage equal 10x the pilot security status with a floor of 0 and a ceiling of 5, 50%. So if we go on me, you can see here that I have 5.0. So this effectively makes it 50% better. You can see here, like it's, I think it's multiplying it by 50% here. I think at least that's what it's doing. I don't know why it doesn't show itself here, but it does at least in the simulator. And I think it will when I undock or start a shield boosting at least. Uh, using quad uh, ballistic control systems with a calfaction catalyst, just going really all out DPS. Five damage modules because I hardly have need any tank. Just got this extra large shield booster, which is plenty. X type extra large shield booster of the pith variant, really good. And just one basic multi spectrum shield hardener too. Uh, and then we've got these two modules here just to aid our range a little bit with the torpedoes and get a bit of better tracking. This will mainly help. Uh, the weather fire will help with the the little frigates that are short range. I chose torpedoes because torpedoes, generally speaking, are pretty good uh, weapon systems for PvE. They don't really care too much about transversal. They also are pretty have relatively good application for being a large weapon, and also get some really good DPS as well as some decent range. I mean, it's not the best, like not crazy range, but it's not bad range either, and it's the range that will always be applying. So if I activate these two guys. You can see here it gets 47 kilometer range and i could put a, a range script here to get even more range i put these two auto, uh, auto targeters here just because i wanted to have uh, just something that could fill up those high slots otherwise there was no particular reason i had these auto targeting systems here just something to fill up those high slots giving me some extra uh, available max amount of targets because you get a more amount of targets when you uh, equip an auto targeting system so they're very nice little modules to have so we'll go here and info, do some law enforcement right here. Kill some EOM terrorists, take them out, and show them that the marshal shows no mercy to these uh, fanatical uh, nutcases. <laughs> Let's go here. I've got the kinetic loaded because it's good. You see here, lowest resistance is the... Actually, no, EM would probably be better. Uh, these guys are shield tanked, I think. So we'll go with EM. I thought kinetic was the lowest one, but it is not. It's EM. So we'll go close to these guys. 
can see here. We've not got the best speed in the Marshall. It's a typical thing for Black Ops battleships. They don't have particularly good speed. It's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. Let's see now. Does our has our shield boosting increased now? Yeah, you can see that our shield boosting has increased now. It's now at 500 something. So we can start shooting. Wreck these guys. Let's see now. Is this also no? Okay, here is kinetic is the smallest. Okay, so it depends from ship to ship. Kinetic slash EM is what you want to do. We want to probably want to do what's the best for the battleship since they'll take the longest amount of time to take out. Okay, let's see now. What is our range? 47 kilometers. So we should be hitting these guys soon. Hmm, taking a bit of time. Dying pretty quickly though. We have some alright DPS, the 1.4k uh, DPS. I mean, it's not the best, but it's, it's some DPS. It's some DPS, you know. Let's switch out to Kinetic. I think Kinetic will be better. Scourge Rage. Scourge Rage. And you get a bit of kinetic torpedoes on this this guy EOM Hydra over here we can stop shield boosting we don't need to do that okay shoot this guy good 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 we're getting some big volleys going on there big volleys well, we can just pulse the shield booster whenever we need to we've got so much tank there shouldn't be any issue let's see now we've got this Hydra over here we've got the EOM Crusaders over here which we can use a Webifies to take them out real quick there we go we'll move towards this Hydra over here a little bit of a webifier as well just to get him to apply just a tiny bit better i think we've got perfect application with these rage torpedoes uh, use, you know use my op webifier that's 22 kilometer range potentially even more if i had a higher black ops skill like imagine it for, for when i went from level 2 black ops to level 3 black ops it went from 20 to 22 kilometers so if i had level 5 black ops maybe it would be like almost 30 kilometers because i think it's a little bit exponential the way it works because you're increasing by a certain amount of percentage each time like uh, when, when we increase it by a fixed percentage each time it'll increase by a little bit more that's what i meant by exponential it's not an actual exponential function you math that's gonna get angry at me <laughs> Okay, let's go for this guy. That he died really quickly. The web of fire seems to be pretty potent when it comes to aiding my application. Let's get a little a boost. He's out. Oh, that was a big boost right there. Really nice with that security status boost. And something that is also pretty good with doing the Marshall in PVE missions. So the Marshall is, as I said before, it's not a particularly effective PVE ship, but it is good because of the tank, as I said before. But there's also another reason that it could be worth doing ratting in in a ship like the Marshall is that you get uh, what is this now there's like a bonus to non capsule pirates while flying the ship you get more security status bonuses so it's a good ship if you want to if you're like a criminal who wants to get more uh, security status just kill rats in this you'll get more standings you'll get your standings will increase more but only thing is i'm thinking is a 10 percent status gains for a ship that's not really particularly effective i don't know if that is a good idea because the thing is, like, if I am using a ship like the like the Marshall, then it's not you know going to kill stuff too quickly. I may as well use a fast a, a ship like a Maraud or something like that. That's also that's less that's cheaper and will kill stuff a lot quicker. And I don't think that ten percent will count, will really matter. You'll still kill. You'll probably kill stuff with a Maraud at like double the speed as what I'm doing right here. EOM Hydra. Let's go for this guy. Boost a little bit there. Boosty boost 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 boost. Let's move towards this guy over here. Yeah, we've got a bit of auto targeting going on as well, so I didn't even really need to lock up anything. Let's stop boosting, not need to do that anymore. We can start shooting this Hydra over here. We can make our way towards these guys that I'm keep on I can webify them directly, you know, when uh, I have killed this Hydra. The missiles feel really slow. They feel really slow because I don't think they have a velocity bonus like the yeah, it's flight time bonus. It's not a, it's not a velocity bonus like the Bargus has. Because if you increase the velocity of your missiles, they do travel further. Because since they are flying faster, for the, and they have a fixed amount of tough flight time, you'll travel effectively a further distance if you are going faster when it comes to your missiles. Uh, the Bargus then has like I think it's 100 percent or something like that bonus to its missile velocity, so you can get really far and really fast missiles. So this very that's what's really good about the Bargist is that you can get your missiles to do damage almost instantly. It's a really handy thing. It just doesn't feel like this way. I'm going really slow motion. We're getting my missiles trying to do some damage, taking a long time. Uh, it's just increasing the flight time. So the, the missiles are going the exact same speed. It's just they're taking a little bit, you know, a little bit. Uh, they're going to be able to go a little bit faster. It's a bit annoying, but 
that's what you get that's what you get when you pay a six bill worth hole <laughs> generally speaking i would have hoped that or i hope that ccp in the future they make buffs to all concourse ships because for their price they're very expensive extremely expensive the enforcer and the pacifier are also pretty expensive like for the other tech compared to other tech 2 ships because they all are tech 2 ships these uh, concourse ships but uh, they're not particularly good i wouldn't say they're particularly good tech 2 ships like they're about the same or in some cases even worse than their standard tech 2 counterparts and they cost like double the price or in the marshall's case like six times more than a standard black ops ship and it doesn't feel like it's particularly good i think that they should have a bit better bonuses or then again maybe it's just because uh, i'm thinking of the black ops battleship as a pve platform it probably is pretty it's very good when it comes to its black ops capability like compared to the widow and that kind of thing i think it is in fact better look quite a bit better than the widow uh, or the other kind of black ops battleships but i i yeah so i guess i'm doing a bit of a bad comparison but i still feel like it should have a bit more dps though i feel like it's got not too good dps for the amount of price you're spending on it uh, it would have been, in my opinion, it would have been most cool if they were to make a Marauder, a Concord Marauder. Oh my god, imagine how powerful that would be. If they made a Marauder that's able to use all weapon systems. Oh, but imagine the price on that thing. It would be some insane prices. Because these guys, these, these EOM guys, they are uh, Kaldari slash Amar ships. You could say they're sort of like... They are Mar hulls, but they're using kind of Kaldari based weaponry. So they're shooting me with hybrid turrets, and they are also got mainly shield based tank. They are not got, they've not got an armor tank like your typical Amarian ships. So they are a very unique kind of race, and I wish that they did have these kind of faction ships in the game, where you have like you know Blood Raiders, etc., etc. Uh, I think the hulls color looks really good. It's just unfortunate that they don't have any but they are not really expanded a whole lot in the lore like there's not a whole lot of stuff on them they have very rarely events related to them i can't even remember them ever having one maybe they have had an event related to eom a long time ago but i think it's also to do with that they got a pretty like simplistic law like they're basically their law is they love death that's all that's all it's not like you know the is these really mischievous pirates that come up with all these weird technologies with like drones and all that kind of stuff for the blood raiders who love newting and sucking the blood out of people and painting their ships in blood like they're not as i guess not as interested when you just got death <laughs> but i wish they would expand on the eom eom line of factions and maybe even release their own uh, ships because the amarian holds they're not a whole lot of uh, Marian holes, it feels like. Or well, actually, I guess they are. You got the Blood Raiders, but uh, it feels like it'd be just really cool, I think, to have some Blood Ra uh, some EOM line of Amarian holes that are a little bit more Kaldari based because all the like the Kaldari based hold factional holes, you know, the Garistas, they're using drones and missiles, which is not like the actual scorpion battleship but then you got blood raiders who basically are the same you know they use pulse lasers which is the same way as the armageddon i guess armageddon no armageddon usually use rockets but it's a bit different but yeah i think it's just cool that these have such a unique style that they have like shields but they're using a typically armor based style hull and then at the same time they have hybrid turrets i just think they look the whole concept behind these guys is pretty cool right, let's go closer there's some insane shield boosting going on right there. Let's move around, just get in range a little bit, you know. Oof, dying. They're dying very quickly. No need to boost anymore. We've done boosting plenty amount. Plenty of boosting. I'm thinking of like what kind of potential changes I can make to this fit. Something I was thinking is maybe we could go with a polarized fit. I'm not 100% sure if I will do that, but maybe it could be a possibility that we do that. Because we'd have some sick dps and i think we'll still be able to tank pretty well because we already are tanking very well now i'll see but it's anyway pretty it's, it's just such a cool ship look at the look at this ship it just looks so cool it's cruising around unloading torpedoes the way it shoots out from the sides as well looks really cool like all these missile arrays right here i think it looks so good it just oh yeah now it's shooting from the top i guess because there's a the npc is a little bit like towards the top of this something probably i should have done is get grabbed some some of the wrecks but it's not like we've got those sick tractor beam bonuses 
like the Marauders where we can track beam stuff that's really far away. Unfortunately, it's not like that. We have to have like a 23 kilometer or something like that with tractor beam twos with non marauder type ships. It's uh, may as well at that point almost just go and pick it up yourself, to be honest. Let's go towards this EOM Hydra over here. And I think this is more the last one. No, this Death Lord, I think, is the last one. Death Lord. Death. He's, uh, he loves death. <laughs> okay. How far is our range now? It's 47, yeah, so it's pl uh, plenty of range for this Hydra over here. We'll kind of orbit this guy, I guess, at 15, something like that. Just so we can keep in range of this Hydra. You can see there's a lot of his shields to take a little bit of time to get through, and then the armor just melts instantly. Not at all a typical Amar ship, but that's the thing with the EOM. They're like Kaldari hybrid of a Kaldari Amar hybrid. And we, Concord guys, or Concord ships, they're like a hybrid of everything. Get a little bit of everything, you know, but not really a master of anything particular. <laughs> there we go, destroyed this EOM guy. And probably why I should let's just grab this one, see if there's any interesting loot in. And then we can just walk back to the Heora base and dock up there. That was a mission well done. Mission well done indeed by this uh, this marshal over here. It's a it's really a ship that I would love to use more, just because of its appearance. The same way I like the widow a lot. Oh, it's just oh, the stress man the stress of the big possible gankers especially now that i post this online people are gonna know that you know that if i keep posting videos of marshall going out there missioning i'm gonna i'm gonna almost guarantee that i'm gonna be actively hunted down because i think if everyone ever gankers dream to get a marshall kill mail you know they're just so expensive you can't really it's hard to get stuff more expensive than a marshall in high sec the only thing would be jump freighters and even then uh, jump freighters i think they're a little bit harder to catch than the marshals or maybe they're not i'm not i'm not again because well it's hard for me to say but i feel like uh, you know the jump freighter parts if you pilot them right i think it's almost impossible to get gank because they just undock from the station and jump through their sino and that's it however i don't know a whole lot about that kind of stuff let's dock up here it'll be interesting to see when i return this marshal to jita eventually if or if, if i even do and I'll, if I do return to Jita, I'll use some kind of... I'll you probably use the jump drive of this ship because it has a jump drive. So I can jump from this system here, Heora, to Jita. I think I can. I don't think it's too far away that I can't jump there. I'm not too sure how jump drives work because I know the jump drives have a limited range. We'll see how that turns out. But it'll be fun to do my first jump drive because I've never used a jump drive before. Believe it or not, I've never used a jump drive before but I'm flying a Marshall. <laughs> All right, there we go. So we got a bit of L4 missions done right here. I'm pretty happy. That was went pretty smoothly and the tank, absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. I really would like to use my Marshall more in L4 missions just because of the appearance, but I don't know how much more we'll use it. I mean, maybe a little bit more, but not something I'm planning on consistently using because of the gank magnet this is, this, oh, this ship right here. Just do the damn price of it. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video right here. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.